Oh, I think Henry bought off to start with. Oh, in, 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 fa in fact, where's um? Which which books would I suggest? Oh, on Goethe. On Goethe. Oh, no, by, by Goethe. By, oh no, you you can't read Goethe. It's impossible. So, so we're reading an interpretation. Um, uh, yes, you have to, because again, that's all we have. But still. So, Henry Bortoft. You can look at him on the internet. It's Henry, Henry Bortoft. Um, and then put, put Goethe. G O E T H E. So you've got this connection. In fact, um, there's a website called Janus Head. Um, which is the Roman god of double seeing, Janus Head. So if you put Janus Head Goethe in the search engine, you will get a, a tons of PDF um, articles on Goethean science, all free. Everything from, from zoology to plant morphology to everything. It's the method we're interested in, not the end product. Does that help? Sorry. Yes, I Yeah. I've started it, yeah. yeah. It's interpretation of the, of the fact that it's the hard work. Because, I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to go through what I've been through the past 15 years of doing this. You know, a lot of Jack Daniels. Yeah, yeah. Um, any, any other questions? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, somewhere in your presentation, you uh, you said everything we do with our hands is useless. Yep. Unless uh, we we change something in the background. Yep. How so can we can you elaborate a little? Bit yeah, yeah. Um, how can we change that background? Right. Your personal background. I tend to again for my for my students say, look, my hands are the foreground. All that stuff is the background. It's my reading of Aristotle and everything else and putting it into practice, my background. That's why you can look at the front, I can do something, you copy me and it doesn't come out the same or comes out better because of our backgrounds. So to change our background changes the foreground, it changes the meaning, it changes the activity. We can only act upon what we perceive. How, you know, you see a busy road with cars, you, have, you want to cross the road, you, can, you, you, you have to act upon that based on your past experience, yeah? Is that your patient's background? No, this is your, this is you. I don't care, you know what, that's a good point. I don't care about the patient, the patient's not in it. This is a, this is a there's a difference between a patient-centered medicine and a practitioner-centered medicine. Osteopathy is practitioner-centered, medicine is patient-centered because it's looking at the end product. I'm looking at the beginning, which is you, or us, our, our consciousness, where we start our thinking from at the beginning, not halfway down the road. So, does that make sense? In fact, look, you the way, what I tend to do is say, for example, is a good example, is um, if you look, if you're watching a football match, soccer match on television, and the TV only, the, this camera only shows from the knee downwards, <laughs> right, of the pe person with the ball, okay? Now, when that ball's passed to another player, the camera follows the ball to the next below the knee. You, you, you see the activity of the feet, but you don't see the game. Now, if you pull back and, and the game unfolds in front of you, okay, what you can see, you can still see the person with the ball, but you also see possibilities. That's how I treat. I treat with possibilities, not for the thing I'm looking at. Not, not in, yeah, because they're too much in the foreground. The t so not, don't, don't retreat into the background, retreat into the middle ground. It's the middle ground I'm interested in. We're too far forward, in, we're too far much in the foreground. We need to come back a bit, so that background is there and the edge is over there. We're in the middle, we're playing, we're in the process, not in the end, the done process. So every time I tell you something to do, it's the end, which is impossible to do anything with, but we still do it to some degree. But the power lies in the control. I've got one hand here, one hand there. Not both hands, no, I'm not here. It takes time, it's difficult. And this is why that guy wrote the letter. After a year or two years or so, suddenly boom, he realized what was happening through the doing. 
not through the theory and then just testing it. That requires a consciousness shift as well. As well. What did I say? That's the, absolutely, that's, that's what this whole thing's been about. A shift in consciousness. Any more questions? Oh, hang on. Go then. Are you sure, Jason? Dr. Stowe always is saying, Dr. Stowe is always saying, you need to play the fool. That it's very important to have foolishness. So how would you interpret that and how you present it today? Um, well, I'll go back to that. Uh, where are we? Hang on. Go back to that. Chill out, relax, play with it. Don't get an opportunity. Back up. Go on. We hear a lot of the signs of plastic surgery. We hear a lot of the signs of plastic surgery. You got it? Also? I see. We hear a lot of the signs of plastic surgery. The art, our artistic. This, that's, that again to me is meaningless. Because to make to say science and art is to separate fragment. It's a fragment again. There's no such thing. There's only doing. Goethe said the difference between science and art is very simple. Art is finished. Science isn't. <coughs> art, you, you finish it, you stick it up on the wall. The interpretation that goes ahead through that, through individual experience. But both, but both science and art are trying to reproduce experience. So to me, get rid of both words. You can use science, just so we know which, which coat to wear in the morning. But, you know, it's about personal experience. And, then, and that was the origin of science and art. Whether it's cave painting or you know, looking at a test tube. But, we, but that's what Heidegger was saying was the primary meaning, which becomes invisible. We just don't see it anymore. When you wake up in the morning, you reorganise your world. When you wake up in a strange place, you reorganise it, but you forget that bit. So I, I, it's like, I mean, I'm in so many hotels traveling, I just lay there for a second, I think, right, like, TV's over there this time. What's that bottle of champagne doing on the floor? That's over there. You know, you reorganize, but we, we just bypass that. Every time you see a patient, you reorganize yourself into a comfort zone, which is what you've been doing beforehand for years. That's the danger, and not realizing that you're doing it. Mm. Yeah, anybody else? I know what you're going to say, you were saying this question just yesterday, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you talk about background, can you hear me? No, it's a bit close, right up. Like an ice cream. When, okay. <laughs> it's like eating it. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about background, um, do you think you talk about the same thing as uh, still? Uh, talks about when he talks about mental picture? Again, this is that representational theory, to start with, but he it still had to talk in a way that people understood. That's why I say that I think still was doing one thing and talking about another. It's very hard for still to communicate what he was saying to other people. This is why they didn't understand him. He spoke in metaphors. I think he had to keep doing this. But what he was actually doing, and to be effective as he was, um, it's not a mental picture, it's a deep new experience. So it's not a, a, a re-representational phenomenon, as in the man sitting in your head, as in re-representing re it. We represent Othello, not present Othello. He was doing one thing, but it, was, it must have been so hard for him. Same as Goethe, just totally misunderstood. And, and it got worse, if not better, to the fact that they just ignored him in the end. He was out. You know, actually, you know, I read some of the old journals, and in some of the journals, still is saying one thing, and someone else has written something to the contrary. He must have seen his baby dying in front of him. Mm. How painful was that? It's like you've created something, you've put your life, your family's died, you've lost it, and you're writing something, excuse my language, the bastards aren't listening. Mm. They don't get it. But he was well ahead, and that's the reason. He was, you know, into the back there. Leslie, Leslie? Yeah. It must have been really painful to watch this thing dying. People stabbing your creation or your finding, yeah, discovery. So you know, I, I suspect there's a kind of ritualization to our practices. And, yeah. And that leads to a kind of a stereotypical response all the time. I was just wondering how does one get that sort of beginner's mind to use it for this kind of setting? 
beginner's mind. Yeah, the Buddha says you should have a beginner's mind. Like well, what do they say about if you see Buddha? If you see Buddha walking up the street, what should you should do? You should kill him. Right. That's what I'm saying. You see, so you don't want to look at the thing. It's doing it yourself. Has this led to a sort of allowing of no technique to emerge? You just um, well, about, well, the like guy Robert was saying, yeah. Um, it's really hard to undo something you're trained to do, or you're, you're desperate to do. This is, this is what, it took me years. And in fact, when, on a Monday, when I run the children's clinic at the British School of Osteopathy, I have three students in the morning and three students in the afternoon, I have to warn them they won't see anything. What I want them to do is try and visualise, through experience, what I'm doing, not, don't look at my hands, look between my hands. You know, what would, use your imagination. Goethe said, if you, don't, if, you, if you don't pay attention to the imagination, the imagination will pay attention to you. That's where we are. And that's, that's, that's dangerous. So I say to my students, imagine what I'm doing. Anything I do is not, is not, it's not finished, it's unfinished. You finish it by your experience. You're in it, it's a dynamic. It's n nothing, so they'll see me doing something, they'll say, and the one student would say, I think you did this. Another student would say, I think you did that. And I say, well, okay, but you have to, you, now you touch. And they feel and go, oh, I was wrong. I go, no, no, you weren't wrong. You were just halfway there. Because your imagination needed to be completed by the direct experience. Does that make sense? You, you, you can imagine. So I say to students, imagine what I'm doing. Then you palpate the patient and it completes it. But unless that first half is not in place, then you start to doubt yourself. So students will say, oh, I made a mistake. I say, no, you didn't make a mistake. You were, you were halfway there. The rest was finished. But they see the first half as separate from the second half, and they call it a mistake. And I go, no, it's not a mistake. It's, about, it's like you, um, my old tutor, God bless her, um, she's dead now, when I was a student at the BSO, used to make us go to the park as part of our training, watch people and imagine what's wrong with them. You don't know, but then you might go up to and go, excuse me, have you got a hip problem? You go, yeah, you go, that completes it. And you can do that in reverse, which is what still did, deepening the experience. Of course, that was before we became regulated by the government, and now it's all really scientific. <laughs> now we're out, as, as our consciousness is out, it's now evidence-based. No longer do we look at patients walking through the park. No longer do we say to people, are you all right, how are you feeling? It's like, you know, are you sure you're feeling that way? Let's get some measurements. Let's take your blood pressure. Yes, that's all very well, but that's the second half of the road, not the first part. So we have to develop ourselves in a historically scientific fashion. Science holds itself up by its history. Goethe said the history of science is science itself. So I understand medical history and the history of science and philosophy. They don't. So therefore, they are based on a very shaky foundation. That's why I've had to go back, as Henry Bortoff said from the beginning, as it were, and work out what was happening. They are blaming us for not being scientific, and I go, hang on a minute, you, you can't blame us, you're worse, because you're actually in power. And that's why we mustn't, we mustn't, um, what's it, we mustn't bow to this. But don't criticize, get on our own thing, don't, don't worry about them. Sorry, Jane. Just shout. I'll repeat, go. Um, do, you think, do you think Sutherland also had It some was worse than a lot. Yeah. Sutherland, McGoon, as far as I'm concerned, misunderstood.